Hey y'all, uh, it is May the 22nd, 2018, and I'd like to thank y'all for joining me, and I'd like to thank you in advance for pondering uh, some of the things that we've been talking about for over three months now, all right? Today, we're discussing a particular article from out of the Sun Sentinel. The SunSentinel.com is where we get this from. And the headline reads this as we dive into it. It says, Parkland shooter Nicholas Cruz made cell phone video of himself. That's the headline. My before we go in the article, you might ask to yourself, why is this headline so ambiguous? Why is it so vague? Why is it so poorly written? Why is it so lackluster and ambiguous? You might ask yourself these questions. We're going to go ahead and seek answers from this article, hopefully. That were reading. Uh, it was an article written just yet. Well, it was published yesterday by a Mr. Rafael Ometa, who's a contact reporter for the South Sun, uh, the South Florida Sun Sentinel. All right, and we're just gonna go ahead and dive in because you know that's kind of uh, sparked my interest a little bit. I don't know about you. Cell phone video of himself, of himself doing what? I don't know. Of him, of him saying what? I don't know. Let's go ahead and find out. Let's see if we can find some answers in this here article. It reads like this. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, high school shooter, Nicholas Cruz, made three video recordings of himself on his cell phone around the time of his deadly rampage. Now, um... Perhaps they forgot the word alleged deadly rampage. I don't know. I'm not sure if they forgot that word. Um, what are these three videos of? I don't know. It doesn't say. According uh, to the summary, <clears throat> Nicholas Cruz made three video recordings of himself. And according to the summary of the evidence turned over to his lawyers, by prosecutors in this case. All right. So the defense earlier this month demanded a portion of the evidence prosecutors intend to use when putting Cruz, who's 19, on trial for murdering 17 people at the Parkland School and injuring 17 more. All right. The defense, I just want to go over it, uh, demanded only a portion, not not all of the evidence or not a very big amount of the evidence but a portion of it all right and also i'd like to put i'd like to interject that unless i'm mistaken unless i'm just understanding this incorrectly um the defense actually did not demand anything not anything at all in fact from what i understand and I could be mistaken. In this particular case, the judge actually forced. The judge, indeed, in, he forced the defense to ask for evidence. Right? Basically put a deadline, said, you have to ask for evidence by this point. Uh, I'm making it mandatory. See, it leads you to believe that perhaps... Nicholas's defense lawyers would have never, ever, ever asked for evidence had they not been forced to. But according to this article, they demanded a portion, only a portion of the evidence, and we're going to discuss that. The article says this, prosecutors fulfilled that demand late Friday. On Monday afternoon, a summary of the evidence was posted to the clerk of court's website. Right. Only a summary of the evidence, not the actual evidence. The quote says this, Three video statements made by the defendant on his cell phone were included according to the summary. It's not clear 
just to make it very clear, it isn't clear when Cruz recorded these videos. All right? And it also is not clear what is on the videos. All we have is the summary, the idea that videos were made at this point. And it's at this point that a Mr. Raphael, who's writing this article, thought that he would um, remind us that Cruz was actually arrested more than an hour after the shooting had stopped. Okay. So I want to ponder that in particular. You know, it's kind of very, very curious. How does this happen? All right, and we've already stated this. We've already posed this question. How does it happen that this young man can sh shoot and murder 17 people, injure 17 other people, and simply blend into the crowd and pretty much just vanish? He must be some sort of escaping genius because he was able to vanish and go chill out at the subway and at the McDonald's and at the Walmart all before getting caught. And that's how the story goes, all right? The public defender's office, which is representing Cruz, did not issue a comment Monday. And, you know, by all means, am I shocked by that? I'm so shocked that they decided not to say anything, not a mumbling word. In its initial demand for evidence, defense lawyers noted that the information becomes a public record when they receive it from prosecutors. Now, this is crucial. Okay? This, this part right here is very crucial. They said that they deliberately chose not to request the most sensitive information, including, get this, autopsy reports. They didn't want to see that. Crime scene photos. No, they didn't want to see that either. Surveillance footage from inside the school. Surveillance footage that we've been talking about for months now that obviously exists. They did not want to see that. They didn't even want to see body camera footage worn by the emergency workers who responded to the scene. I want to stop right there and ponder some things. All right. You might ask yourself, well, why did not they request this sensitive information? How come they didn't request that sort of sensitive information? Now, we're only here to guess because we're not given direct answers. But you can infer that the line of reasoning would be that they did not request it because, well, it would become public record, would it not? That's what the article says. And certainly, if they're the defense lawyers of Nicholas Cruz, they wouldn't want certain things such as an autopsy report. They wouldn't want crime scene photos to become public. They wouldn't want surveillance footage to become public and things of this nature because what that would do is potentially uh, it would incriminate Nicholas Cruz in the eyes of the public. All right? In the eye of the public, he, Nicholas Cruz would be uh, probably unfairly judged due to the leaks of these autopsy reports, crime scene photos, and surveillance footage. All right? So the line of reasoning becomes that <clears throat> in no way is the defense trying to prepare themselves for proving anybody to be innocent in this particular situation. They, they've far gone that. They didn't, not since day one, did they ever consider that their client could possibly be innocent in this whole situation. Mm -mm. No, these defense lawyers are pretty dang certain that Nicholas Cruz did in fact do all of what he is alleged to have done. They don't want to make it seem as though he's guilty, not in the public eye, even though, meanwhile, Nicholas Cruz has been guilty in the public eye for months now, for many months. You know, you, you might have seen articles, various hundreds and hundreds of articles, discuss whether or not Nick Cruz should be in jail forever and ever, or whether or not he should be killed uh, and put to death. All right, this is the only thing for the most part that you've seen. So in the public eye, Nicholas Cruz absolutely is guilty for certain. All right. And this is, regardless of the fact that there is no evidence, 
or at least whatever evidence may exist is completely absolutely secret even up until this point there is no sort of motivation that Nicholas Cruz would have and certainly there is no eyewitnesses there certainly is none all right who can point their finger and say that they saw Nicholas Cruz shoot anybody that day all right so the defense lawyers they, they don't want any part of it they don't want to hear evidence they don't want to see evidence they don't want to analyze evidence nothing like that so the article continues it says other evidence was turned over or made available for the defense to review which includes the clothing the backpack and the alleged rifle case that was worn by Cruz that day all right that also includes Cruz's recorded confession which nobody has heard and nobody knows exists we're told that it exists but we haven't been able to see it or hear it or anything like that and also they requested cell phone records they have record, uh, requested crime lab reports all right but certainly no autopsy or anything like that no, no uh, footage surveillance footage none of that kind of evidence no crime scene photos nothing they requested nothing but they do want crime lab reports of some sort and also they did request mental health records and school records all right. They might note that many different publications have discussed at great length the mental health records in, in regards to Nicholas Cruz. All right. That seems to pretty much be public uh, knowledge. The school records, anybody who wants to look it up can find different various school records in regards to Nicholas Cruz. They also requested internet search histories, which, by the way, is is pretty much incredibly hard to prove. Number one, uh, children, lots of times they search all sort of things. Number two, it's very hard to prove that Nicholas Cruz searched anything on the internet. That would be a very hard thing to prove. All right, so the evidence will not be released to the public immediately. This this little evidence that they did request. Of course, that won't be a release to the public immediately. State attorneys, office employees are legally required to redact certain information, which could take several days. And that's understandable. Now, is several days going to turn into a couple of months? We're just going to have to wait and see. And the article finishes off by saying this. Cruz faces the death penalty if convicted, All right. or if proven guilty, by the way. His lawyers have repeatedly over and over and over and over until they're blue in the face, offered to have him plead guilty in exchange for a life in prison. Arguing, get this, and this is probably the main, the main thing to ponder on in this whole entire article. Nick, Nick Cruz's defense lawyers are arguing <clears throat> that he should plead guilty and just spend the rest of his life in prison because it would spare the victim's families of the spectacle of a trial and a lengthy automatic appeals process. All right. In other words, <clears throat> Nick Cruz's defense attorneys are arguing that if Nick just pleads guilty and spends the rest of his dying days in prison, that it would spare the victim's families from the spectacle of what used to be known as due process. All right? Due process isn't something that's uh, talked about all too much anymore, but however, due process used to be a thing. It used to be an idea in which, you know, America was known for. Not anymore. Not anymore, because due process in and of itself is a spectacle. All right. It's an unnecessary spectacle, according to this article and according to the defense attorneys. All right. But I want to I want to end up this video by asking you a question. Something to ponder on. Now, let's think hypothetically. Now, God forbid. But let's imagine you, you knew somebody, you had a loved one. And unfortunately, God forbid, you had a loved one who was killed tragically 
in a mass shooting similar to this one. All right. Let me ask you this question. Why would you want to go through the spectacle of trying to figure out for certain who killed your loved one? Why would you want to know? That's the question I'm asking you. If you could just say, oh, that boy is guilty, put him in jail or put him to death. Well, why would you want to go through the entire spectacle of finding out for certain whether or not the boy did it? All right. <laughs> why would you even bother? See, if you had a loved one, why would you ever bother to try and figure out who definitely killed your loved one? Why would you want to know? That's a process which is lengthy and unnecessary. All right. What's more better is if they just get this boy to um, confess, although he's allegedly already confessed, even though we can't see the video of him confessing or anything like that. Why would you want to go through that whole process when you could just throw this, this boy a or maybe perhaps put him to death? Why would you want to see the evidence is what I'm asking you. Why would you want to know... Uh, perhaps as motivation. Why would you ever, ever, ever want to hear from an eyewitness? Why would you really, really want to know who killed your loved one? Wouldn't that be an unnecessary spectacle? Anyways, we're we're waiting breathlessly for these videos, these cell phone videos um, that can prove to be, I guess, very incriminating, depending on what's on them, all right? We're waiting for that, but of course, we're not going to see any sort of evidence, like I said. We're not going to see any uh, uh, school footage. We're not going to see any footage from body cams, from emergency workers. We're not going to see anything like that. We're not going to see autopsy reports. We're not going to see uh, crime scene photos or nothing. None of that is going to be made available to the public. Now, you're going to be reminded of it over and over and over every single day. Because many, many, many articles and publications will talk about it, but they're only going to halfway talk about it. They're not going to really discuss the lack of evidence or anything like that. They're just going to tell you uh, that I guess something's happening. I, I guess. I don't know. Maybe eventually we'll try and figure all that out. Until then, I guess we're all just going to sit here breathlessly and wait for it. All right. Anyways, I appreciate y'all coming through and uh you know pondering these things with me certainly we'll have more and more to ponder as the absurdities just continue to snowball in this particular um uh, situation and so uh, once again thank you for your patience and uh, i appreciate y'all anyways i'll holler at y'all a little bit later it's may the 22nd 2018